game marks. Oh, that was not a smart move. That, that's, that's not, that was not helpful. Alright, fuck it, I'm going in, I'm going in! No, I'm not, I'm coming back out. So yeah, I'm, I've never been as good at this uh, as I was for uh, Dig Dark. Hey, welcome to Mike's Play. Uh, I'm going to check out a couple games here that uh, have inspired me. And it's, it's if you heard me on the podcast talking about wanting to work on a game called Draco Wing, this is, uh, these are the games behind that uh, inspiration. More the second one than the first one. The first one is kind of, I've gone back and played, just kind of see where it came from. It was the original, the second game, uh, Kobo Deluxe, the first game, Bosconian. Kobo Deluxe, uh, inspired by... We've got a heritage to Bosconi, and you'll see the, the parallels are, are pretty obvious. Um, playing the game on my Raspberry Pi uh, using this, this USB Nest controller. Uh, you can check this out. This thing is um, an IP lawsuit waiting to happen, but uh, check that out right there. Made in China. That's right. China don't care. All right. Let's launch up uh, Bosconian. All right. While well, this is firing up, um, Bosconian is is important in a couple ways. Uh, one, it it, used, it was created in, in 1981 and uh, uses uh, audio sound effects. There's a guy talking to you, uh, and that's kind of unique for the time. It's not one of the first games, uh, if not the first game, uh, to do that. But also because it has a uh, enter another quarter to keep playing option. So, uh, it was the first game to do that, basically. Guys, just genius, um, Farmville, before there was Farmville, it's like, hey, if you want to pick up right where you left off, give another quarter and you can keep on going. Um, for all of its good historical reference, uh, relevance, uh, I never really heard of this game. I had to, I had to research it and dig it up when I was looking into doing Draco Wing. I was kind of curious what other games, uh, were made in this style and what the Cobo Deluxe was, um, based on and uh i found this game so i hadn't really heard of it but um it is quite significant um for some of the things that it has done so i'm going to put in a virtual quarter here and take off now my ship here i am blasting off um i'm not speeding up or slowing down it moves on its own when i fire it fires um Frontwards and backwards. Uh, Eight-way, directional. So, um, ooh. All right. Took all the way as out. Um, so, and I'm chipping away here, this green battle station up here. Um, that's the goal. If you look at the map on the right, it marks their positions. And you can either take them out by taking out the edges like I did there, or you can do this Star Wars Death Star run and hit this, um, well... You gotta be able to shoot it. Uh, hit the bit in the center. Let's see if I can... Uh, come on. Get in the center. There we go. Alright, let's take this last one out over here. And we go on to the next round. Uh, I really like this gameplay. I mean, even though this isn't the one that I played, I was playing, uh, you'll, you'll see Koa Deluxe here in a moment. Um, now he just closed his little eye, so I don't think I can, I can shoot him when he does that, but... Um, even simplified back to this, this old version. Uh, and, and if you played Draconian on uh, Commodore 64, that was a version uh, of this kind of game that added um, the ability to rescue people. So when you blew away the station, there'd be a little dude defender style to uh, go in and pick up. One of the things I wanted to add for Drake Wing, I thought that was a good idea, uh, that fell out of Kobo. Um, now you just start in the middle of it, man. I'm just in the shit right now. Um, don't, don't mess with me, son. I'll take you out. All right, come on, come on. Come on. Trying to talk in... It doesn't do any kind of um, guiding, so it can, like like that. You can be off by one pixel and miss the uh, center. Um, but for a game that came out in 1981, uh, really good controls. 
I'm really responsive. Um, like I said, I, uh, I'm a fan of Bosconian, even though I hadn't played it until mm, 2010. I think uh, when I when I grabbed the main emulator and, and checked it out. So you're really seeing the whole game. Um, I haven't got in there. A draconian also, in addition to adding um, the graphics on draconian, by the way, not as good. It's Commodore 64, um, but it added. Uh, It added the rescuing the guys, but it also, like its name, added a uh, dragon to there. And if you took too long, this space dragon uh, came out after you uh, to force you to, to hurry it along and, and get out. And there was an exit. So here I got a free scrolling. Like if I scroll off the top and the bottom, uh, I just loop around on the map. Um, Draconian had a top and a bottom, and you would enter to the bottom and exit to the top. So you kind of like went in, rescued your guys, and then got the hell out of there. Alive, alive. And I got the high score of the day. It's a great thing about having your own uh, main build. You're always the high score. Unless you let somebody else play, and you just delete their scores. Uh, you can see I tested this out before. Uh, dad. All right. So here you can see I can throw a coin in, um, and then hit start, and then I get to continue exactly where I was. Um, really kind of obvious in retrospect, but you know somebody had to be first to do that, uh, and this was the game. All right. Well, this is enough of Bosconian. Let's go check out the more modern equivalent. Cobalt Deluxe you can grab. Um, if you Google it, it'll, it'll come back up and, and you'll, you'll find it. It's open source uh, and it's been compiled pretty much to everything. I mean, this is on a Raspberry Pi. Um, so the current guy who who maintains this project uh, is working on like a sequel, although it's been several years, so you know it's slow going. Um, I'm gonna jump in at gamer here. Um, the fonts and some of the the text is misaligned. That's not a fault of uh, the game. That's a fault of um, my ability. I I recompiled this from source. Uh, for the Pi, not everything's working uh, exactly perfect. Uh, enough, though, that I can play the game. Um, I really had to, I had to recompile it because the guy had hardwired um, the, the joystick buttons, and they didn't map well on this gamepad. Uh, this this made-in-China gamepad here, uh, button A is actually button 2, and he had hard-coded hard button 1 to be fire, so I could not fire um, so I grabbed the source and, uh, I recompiled it. That was a fun few nights. Always fun to dive into somebody else's game code and, and try and figure out what in the hell is going on. And then modify it. So, uh, you can see we've got the basics the same. We've got the little map on the side. We shoot in forward, backward motion. The play is a little bit quicker. Um, you can amp it up, I think. Uh, if I go in there to, like, some of the higher difficulty levels. Um, the ship does a better job of, of snapping to a grid, uh, almost. I don't know if there's any code in there that's doing that. It just feels like it's a little easier to get yourself lined up for the center of the bases. And you can obviously see the bases, uh, are these pipe systems. Um, here, let me get the hell out of the middle. Um, it gets really wild on, on some of the different things that, that shoot out of the little turrets. But the bases are these system of pipes. Now, if you take out the, the center still, you take out the whole base. Uh, you take out all the pipes, I think the center still remains. It doesn't blow away. Um. Whoa! You can get this little bullet hell uh, thing going in some levels, too. Because um, each level kind of has its own little twist on 
what enemies you'll get. Uh, the one thing I want to add, uh, or an idea that I have in Draco Wing, uh, when I get this, is I want Death Blossom. I want to be able to do this as a power-up, as a button, you know, just spin around. Death Blossom being from the last Starfighter. Um, if you don't know the reference, you really should watch the last Starfighter. Um, I don't understand why you would be a fan of Game Marks and watching my videos and you don't know what the last Starfighter is. Um, probably because you're really young. So, go watch that, and then come back and finish this video. Alright, welcome back. Um, you know, so I spent a lot of time, I first found this game on, um, uh, the, uh, Classic Xbox. It was not released for the Classic Xbox. Uh, I, I mod chipped my Xbox, because, you know, there was, like, no games for the Classic Xbox. So I went ahead and, uh, mod chipped it and then i was diving into the homebrew scene of what, what you could do with it and somebody had ported uh, this to the xbox so uh i grabbed it and played there now check this out i love this see you got them all in a circle there which is exactly like the third or fourth stage layout in uh bosconian uh i don't know if that was a direct descendant or if that was just through the years uh because cobo deluxe is a update of um x cobo um, which is another open source thing by a, a different developer, but uh, I haven't grabbed it or played it to know uh, what differed um, in it. But um, I don't know if if that started out as like somebody actually liking the game Bosconian and doing a uh, clone, and then just keeping some of the layouts of some of there. Now uh, in the later versions, if you grab an early version, one hit and you're dead. The later version here adds this this health meter uh, there on my uh, left. And as I take out uh, a base, if I can get this one, the health will go back up a little bit. So let's see if I can. Ah, just so much shooting out of this. I need my I need my death blossom. There we go. Got a little bit more health back. Oh, and then lost it all. Um, played the crap out of this on my uh, classic Xbox. It ended up being like the only thing that I ended up playing on the classic Xbox. It was, you know, there was there was no games for it commercially, which is why I went ahead and I modded it and I ran XBMC on it. Uh, and it basically served as my media center. Um, is is how its life lived out. Um. There was a handful of games, I think. Maybe I'll go back and do some uh, mic plays on classic Xbox games that were actually uh, good. Uh, the remake of, of Prince of Persia is on the list. Uh, there was a great Shrek game that you wouldn't expect to be pretty good. But uh, not only is it really good, my uh, daughters could play that game at a very young age. I think around four or five, uh, my oldest daughter uh, was able to play it. And there was just a lot of... Uh, UI that can be learned from that Shrek game. Uh, I definitely should uh, get that set up uh, and play that because uh, that's a good one for game designers to check out. One thing that uh, I do want to fix, although I guess you had to lie, look how the front bullets are all stacked on top of each other and the back bullets are all spaced out. I mean, I get that because, you know, I've, I've implemented... Um, basics of flying around and shooting in the map in, in Draco Wing uh, already. This is going to be a bullet hell one. I can feel it. Um, but I don't know. Just aesthetically, I, I get why that's there because of... Um, oh, I love I love these levels. I, I love the levels that just have the big massive uh, bases that you just gotta kind of like you, you wedge down and then you say, all right, fuck it, I'm going in, I'm going in. No, I'm not, I'm coming back out, and I'm not going to make it from that edge. Okay. Because uh, you really just want that Death Star run. I mean, that's that's the best moments uh, in this game for me. What really draws me to it. Now, I think I can get at it from the side up there. It looks like it's down there. Here we go. All right, we're going in. Cover me, Red Leader. Oh, but I can make it. I can make it. Feel it. Gonna, this is gonna happen. 
We gotta stay out of the, the line of shot here. There we go. And you just fly through, not looking back. That's that's the that's the great moment there. It's a fun arcade shooter. Uh not like a whole lot out there. I mean this is even for you know nineteen eighty one being the original Bosconian and uh there being a few different ports, there was an Atari uh, like 5200, I think. Not not a 2600 Atari version, uh, but like a 5200 or one of the Atari computers uh, had a version. Um, but it it kind of died out. I don't really know of any other uh, games that that took this style shooter and made something with it. So the the annoying little sound there is they added this little meter that caps your rate of fire. Um, at the gamer level, it, it doesn't really, uh, do much, um, but at the higher levels, uh, it will, it will, uh, make you think about when you shoot. You just can't fly around like I'm doing now, uh, shooting all over the place. Alright. Alright, I can get you, and I get you. Maybe. These bullets. Oh, that was that was horrible. My last ship. Well, and at this point too, you you've seen it. Oh wait, I guess that was that was my last ship. That was it. Um, what a god level. Let's see what happens. Uh, it does pick up. Kobo Deluxe does pick up from the level at. Uh, whoa. Focus. Uh, it does pick up from. Um, the uh, level that you you last completed so it's it's kind of like you just pick it up again another great feature that I love about the game that's definitely worth keeping um, you can see that I'm just like eking out a shot every now and then like I don't have as many shots going on because uh, my my power up heat up meter or whatever down there heat meter uh, is filled up yeah it's gonna go quick on the uh, god level like I said it's gonna go quick on the god level but, um, that is Bosconian and Kobo Deluxe. Alright, thanks for watching.